Blue Jays on Sportsnet. Brought to you by Home Hardware and Building Center locations. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. And by the 2013 Honda CRV, an IIHS top safety pick. Honda is the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Welcome to Rogers Center. The Yankees are in town for the first game of 19. These two will play. Joe Girardi's ball club lost an extra inning game last night at home against the Arizona Diamondbacks. Now it's time to take a look at the Yankee lineup. A little different look. Top of the order, Brett Gardner has done a great job against Toronto. 357 average. He's hit four of his 17 career home runs against the Blue Jays. And then Ichiro Suzuki, he has worn out the Blue Jays over his career. He started in 2001 with the Mariners. He has a 340 career average, and he's 26 for 31 in stolen bases. Good speed, middle of the order for the Yankees. Brandon Morrow gets set for his fourth start of the season. He's allowed two runs or fewer in two of his three starts, but it hasn't received a lot of run support in those two no decisions this year last time out versus Kansas City two runs six innings pitch another no decision Blue Jays looking to win their first game with Brandon on the mound Brandon Mono as Pat mentioned had a good outing in Kansas City first time he went six innings for the season he looked to build on that here tonight Brett Gardner will lead things off and Gardner is back healthy again and back in the Yankee lineup First pitch of the ball game is outside. Gardner had elbow problems a year ago. He eventually had to undergo surgery in July and played in just 16 games last year. We have talked about that in the past with Brett Gardner with him missing last year for the Yankees. He brought that element of speed where you can manufacture some runs last year, and that was missing. There's a strike. It's two and one to Gardner. Now Brandon Morrow, like any starter, wants to get off to a good start and pitch ahead. We saw that last night with R.A. Dickey. How much easier it was for him when he threw that first pitch for a strike. Three and one. Yeah, he was good last night. He was all over that strike zone. Said he was getting close. Right now, it looks like Brandon Morrow's pacing himself. Ball really not exploding out of his hand like we have seen in the past. Right, you chased one, might have been out of the strike zone. Full count. But Gardner is now 29 years old. He's a third round Yankee pick in 2005 in the June draft. Ball is hit high and deep to right. Rajay Davis right on the edge of the warning cup. Hauls it in. One down. Take a look at the defense behind Brandon Morrow. Cabrera, Rasmus, and Davis in the outfield left to right. Lori Kawasaki on the left side. Historis and Connection on the right side. And Brandon Morrow and J.P. Pierre and Sevi make up the Blue Jays' battery tonight. And since John Gibbons moved Meiser Sturis at second base, he has played much better. He's had two errors, both of them throwing errors. When he was at third base, but he looks comfortable at second. If he can get to it, he'll make the out. Robinson Cano, very dangerous hitter. He's on fire right now. Cano has gone 14 for 34 in his last seven games. That's a 412 average on the season, just under 300. Five home runs for Robinson Cano. It's a Yankee team that hits a lot of home runs. They haven't put it all together. Manufacturing runs and getting runs together. There's a ball headed to the gap, and that's going to get down and bounce off the wall. Cano breaks it down. He'll jog into second with his one-out double. He was out here early working with Kevin Long, the hitting instructor for the New York Yankees, working on pitches on the inside part of the play. That time, that ball was up. And Cano with that classic left-handed swing powers the ball into the gap in right center field. Blue Jays have had success in the past versus Cano by jamming him with fastballs, but that time it was out, out and up over the plate. Cano hit 48 doubles a year ago. Kevin Long, one of the best hitting coaches in all of baseball. 
And he's had some pretty good pupils. <laughs> Kevin Euclid in his first year with the Yankees. Steps in with a runner in scoring position. That hit him. Hit him on that protective pad, and he'll take first base. Tomorrow has allowed a double and hit a batter here after one out. Just trying to ride that fastball. Inside, Euclid gets hit on a good spot for him. Two, two seam fastball. Just barely nicked that padded left elbow. That's one of the real advantages that hitters have in this day and age. They can wear all that body armor and lean out over the plate and really not feel the effects of being hit. So Travis Hafner had a big hit Wednesday night, a pinch hit home run. Made the Yankees a winner against Arizona. Hafner, over 10 years of big league service, off to a good start. This might be a pretty good pickup for the New York Yankees. Everybody knows about the injuries that they have had this year. The Yankees have always had a lot of success with older guys, especially left handed hitters. Especially in that ballpark. Yeah. That ballpark. I think it's going to. Really benefit Travis Hafner this year playing for the Yankees. Well, these two guys, Euclid and Hafner, back to back, are among the best in getting on base. They both have terrific on base percentages, and they always give the Yankee hitters behind them opportunities to hit with men on base. Yeah, you throw in uh, Brett Gardner also, and, and there are three guys in their lineup that see a lot of pitches per plate appearance. I'm not afraid to hit with two strikes. Really work that count. That's a fair ball, and Connor Hill can't knock it down. Cano is around third. He's coming in to score. Euclid is being stopped at third, and the Yankees have taken a one-nothing lead. Yankees have won seven of their last nine games, and they've been doing it a lot with hitting. Over the last nine games, they've had the AL best 291 batting average, and they're starting off hot here again. That looked like that split grip changeup. That is hit down the right field line by half to cash in the runs. The Yankees have scored first, and this year when they score first, they're a perfect 5 and 0. Former Blue Jay Vernon Wells steps in with runners at second and third. Right at the top of the strike zone, but it's called the ball by Mark Wickner, the home plate umpire. Well, spent part of 12 seasons with the Blue Jays, and he's got 127 homers here at Rogers Center. Two and zero. Oh. Well, here's what we were talking about as far as pitching from behind. I don't care who you are, how good your stuff is. It's a difficult thing to pitch from behind. Puts a lot of stress on everybody. Puts a lot of stress on you as a pitcher. You're a Pete Walker puts stress on him as the pitching coach. And John Gibbons. The offense puts a little pressure on the, the bullpen. We haven't had that the last couple of outings. The starters have been great. Talked about Dickey last night. Jay Happ pitched into the sixth inning. Josh Johnson was his best this year, throwing seven innings a couple of nights ago. 2 0 pitch to Wells. He hits it on the ground, and that'll drive in Euclid from third. Wells is out, but the Yankees have taken a 2 0 lead. Yan Yankees playing some situational hitting right there. Blue Jays had to keep the, the infield back. First inning. He'll give up the one for an out right there. Soft little ground to the middle of the diamond and gets Vernon Wells an RBI. Now you got to save that run. That third run that's standing over there at third. Ichiro Suzuki. He is a tough out in these situations in that he always has the ability to put the bat on the ball. It's off to a slow start. You saw his 190 batting average. Difficult for the third baseman. You've got to play in because he can run so well. 
but has that ability to slap the ball right by you at third base. Suzuki is now 39 years old. He came to the Yankees last year this season and was a real boost to their offense. We really got on fire when the Blue Jays were in town. If you remember that, we had a big series with them. Had a double header with them, and he went off in that double header. Had five RBIs in a game last year against the Jays on August 10th. Third time in his career he's driven in five in a ball game. One and two, two outs. Check swing foul off and park it. Clip Darren Sebia. And to save that run down to third with two outs, Travis Halfman doubled and moved to third on the ground up by Wells. Missed for that pitch down and in. Full count, two outs. Yankees have scored two here in the first. Count is two and two. On the ground. This Torres comes after it and each year is retired. That ends the inning, but the Yankees have taken a two-nothing lead in their half of the first. Top of the order when we come back, Rajay Davis has hit Andy Pettit well, Melky Cabrera, and then Jose Bautista back in the third hole. And you can see his frustration as he fires his glove up against the dugout bench. And then right behind him, John Gibbons goes down just to make sure his starter is okay. Rough start against the Yankees. We mentioned the Yankees are 5 0 when they score first. Take a look at the Blue Jays lineup. Top of the order, Rajay Davis went 4 for 8 in the last two games against the White Sox and against Andy Pettit. He's always hit him up. Well. Seven for 12 with a homer and three RBIs. That's a 583 average. Jose Bautista back in the lineup tonight. He's the DH and against Andy Pettit. He too has hit well. A 310 average with a pair of homers and five RBIs. And they're up against a tough lefty in Andy Pettit. Andy Pettit got a 2013 season off to a pretty good start. Going 2 0 before back spasms forced him to miss his scheduled start. He hasn't pitched since April the 9th. So he might be a little rusty. On his first two starts for the first time since 2003. Davis drills into the field, and that ball is going to get past Wells all the way to the ball. Rajay Davis is turning second, headed for third, and he'll get there with a slide. That's how you answer two runs in the top half of the inning. Rajay hit a ball just like that in last night's game that went for a double. They were able to get over and cut that ball off. Tonight he smokes it right to the wall. 
Don't waste any time. Go up there, hack it, and that's what Rajay does. He has been tearing up lefties this year. And he gets a good start here, legging out that triple. Got to have a run now. Guys at third, nobody out. Noki Cabrera, the former Yankee, steps in. Cabrera just won for 14 in the White Sox series. Breaking ball on the ground and that'll chase home Rajay Davis. So just like that, the Blue Jays get one back. Designated hitter, number 19, Jose Bautista. Bautista back in the lineup. Davis scores here in the first. It's a 2 1 Yankee lead. Off the plate. Jose last played in Kansas City and then his back flared up on him. He missed the entire White Sox series. You heard some talk, but that maybe his move to third base had something to do with that and Jose says no. It was really a slide that he had on Sunday in the second base where he might have wrenched his back just a little bit and you know with the back anytime there's a little pain in that you can't do anything on a baseball field. And then to compound it he got on the airplane for the long flight back to Toronto. 2-1 from Pettit. Downstairs it's 3-1. The red hot Edwin Encarnacion is on deck. Edwin went 8 for 14 against the White Sox in the four game series. Bautista takes the walk. Let's take a look at the defense behind Andy Pettit. We mentioned Vernon Wells in left field. He's a three time gold glover. Brett Gardner's in center. Ichiro Suzuki has 10 gold gloves to his credit. Euclid Nunez on the left side. Cano and Oberbay on the right side. Robbie Cano has two gold gloves to his credit. And Francisco Cervelli teams up with Andy Pettit. There's some real good second basemen in baseball. Ian Kinsler, Dustin Pedroia come to mind, but I think this guy's right here. He is the best. Robinson Cano, he can do it all. Great hitter, great fielder. You, you can't ask for him to do much more for this Yankee team. No, he is really. Been one of the best second basemen since he came into the league. Edwin Encarnacion having a good look at Pettit. It's a ball on the strike. Edwin is nine for his last 17 going back to Kansas City. And that's a welcome sight for John Gibbons. Breaking ball tried to hit that outside corner pitch track suggested it did but Pettit didn't get the call just under the knees right there. Edwin has looked very dangerous at the plate. He started holding on to the bat again with two hands and has helped his swing. He's a little bit more compact. Well you can see he feels good at the plate yeah. now. He's laying off borderline pitches. He's got a pitch on his mind. And when he does, counts three and one. If he likes it and it's in the his zone, he doesn't get cheated. Tries to hit it as far as he can. That it fell behind Bautista three and one. Now he's fallen behind in Conacion. Rajay Davis with the leadoff triple scored on the ground ball by Melky Cabrera. And with the breaking ball, and then kind of showed swung over the top of it. Then going to that a little bit more, using the slider a little bit more. you can do about that. Pettit gets out of the inning, but the Blue Jays cut into the Yankee lead. Rajay Davis triples and scores. Edwin Encarnacion on the full count breaks his bat and lines into the double play.
here tomorrow. It starts at 107 p.m. And then on Sunday, another 107 start. Yankees in town for a three game set. This is the first time these two ball clubs have met this year. They'll meet 19 times over the course of the season. There's a long drive to left field. That ball is deep, but foul. Eduardo Nunez, the fill in for Derek Jeter. He's always been a pretty good offensive player. He's had problems more than anything throwing than fielding. Well, they tried him at so many different positions last year, tried to make him more of a super utility type of player for the Yankees. He had some starts in the outfield, third, short, second base, spent some time in the minor leagues also. Now, with the injury to Derek Jeter in the announcement yesterday that Jeter will not be here until after the All Star game. This is their everyday shortstop right here, and he can settle in there. 0 oh and 2. The slider is popped up. Aaron Sevier takes the mask off, moves under it, and Nunez is up. One down. Fans, it's time for our Blackberry Sneak Peek stat of the game, brought to you by the new Blackberry Z10 built to keep you moving. Two strike sliders, and that has gone up this year for. Brandon Morrow with two strikes about 48% of the time. He's going to throw that slider. He threw one right there to Nunez. And and it makes a lot of sense. He is a strikeout pitcher. His best pitch is a fastball and it's 95 96 something like that. But he gets a lot of strikeouts with that slider. Lyle Overbank goes after the first pitch. Melky Cabrera a long run on the track in front of the ball and holds it in. Overbank gave it a ride. Former Blue Jay making a bid for an opposite field home run. The fans have seen that plenty of times from Overbay here in this ballpark. You know, Buck, I keep watching the radar gun for Brandon Marr on that fastball, just 90 miles an hour. I don't know if he's trying to pace himself. You see that ball going a little bit away from Overbay, and he doesn't catch it flush, so it stays in the ballpark. But usually Morrow sits at 93 or 94 and gets it up to as high as 97. Yeah, I think he was 97 at times in Kansas City. So here's the catcher, Francisco Cervelli. Cervelli's done a good job coming up with some key hits. He's already driven in seven runs. This was thought to be a real concern for the Yankees with the departure of Russell Martin behind the plate. I think it always will be until a young player proves that he can play every day. Cervelli has had some flashes of good streaks in the major leagues. Chris Stewart and Cervelli battling for playing time, and so far, Cervelli has the upper hand. This has popped up and have reached the seats. Cervelli's now 27 years old. He comes from Venezuela. He had a game tying home run last night against Arizona. Came in the ninth inning to push the game into extra innings, but Arizona would score two in extra innings to win it. Yeah, excitable guy. He won't get cheated at the plate, even with two strikes from Brandon Morrow. He'll swing hard. Boy, Morrow's not getting many close calls at all. And the fastball still. Curiously, just in the low 90s. Three one. So then he rips it down the left side, and that is a fair ball. Bangs up against the wall. Cabrera plays it well. Here's the throw to second, not in time. Francisco Cervelli with his second double of the season. It comes with two outs, and Cabrera played it about as well as you could. Told you he doesn't get cheated. Fastball count and he's going to let it fly. Rips it down the left field line. Cabrera gets over there quickly. Like you said played it perfectly. And Cervelli had a little bit of a hesitation. Before he came to first base wondering if he could go. Milky did everything he could. As Sturris on the other end the same way. He just legs it into a double. Brett Gardner back to the top of the order. Here's the numbers for. Morrow in his career, 17 games. So 
That's how you're just feeling for that outside corner with that off speed pitch. You mentioned the velocity. Last time out in Kansas City, he averaged 93 with the fastball and hit 96. I haven't seen that yet here in the first two innings. And you hear pitchers talk about getting loose, that it can't get loose. That's what it looks like here. Now we'll watch for a couple of innings and see if he does get loose and let it go. But you just don't see that oomph on his fastball that we've seen in the past. Two and out. Cervelli at second. Just off the plate there and see is going to take a trip to the mound. You know, it's really not unusual. I mean, we talk about starters all the time. They make 32, 33 starts over the course of the year, and every once in a while you're going to go out there and and take an inning or so to get What's your rhythm on? into the flow of the game. It didn't take those guys long to get into their rhythm. They got here early. Tell you what, that's a good vantage point out there in center field. Good crowd on hand. First of three against New York. You know, we saw that last night with, with Chris Sale. He wasn't right the first couple of innings either, but then he got on track and shut down the Blue Jays. As he pitches seven innings, same thing looks for Moro. This doesn't look right. Uh, he has fallen behind, and that's always going to create problems. He's only thrown three first pitch strike to the first ten batters. Now you've got to be wary of Robinson Cano sitting on the first pitch of this at bat after the walk. Cano doubled and scored in his first trip to the plate. Kind of a helpless feeling for a pitcher out there on the mound, not having your best weapon. Yeah, that's his fastball. He can rear back and just throw it by you when he needs to. And so far, we haven't seen that. Maybe he threw a breaking ball to get ahead. Cano and Ryan Braun of the Milwaukee Brewers are the only two players in the major leagues to score at least 100 runs in the four. Last four seasons. Cano's already scored one tonight. Marl missed the outside corner and he just hasn't been able to bury that fastball down in the bottom of the zone like we see so often. It's also a challenge for the catcher, wondering where to go next. Ball on the strike. And now hits it hard to center field. Rasmus backs up. He gets there and makes the catch. The Yankees strand the pair. It's a 2-1 Yankee lead. J.P. Aaron C.B. will start the second. And Brett Lowry looking for his first hit of the season. And Colby Erasmus.
top of the first. The Blue Jays scored a single run in the bottom half of the inning. J.P. Aaron Seba to start things up for the Jays. Mark Wagner's got a tight strike zone. Pettit didn't get that call. CB is retired, one down. Blue Jays on Sportsnet, brought to you by the 2013 Honda CRV, an IIHS top safety pick. Honda is the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. So, with one out, Brett Laurie will step into the batter's box. He has been working hard to. Get his timing down. Had to throw one up and away. A lot has been asked of Brett Laurie. Basically, did not have spring training this year because of the injury that he had in the WBC. So you know the timing is not going to be there. So you've got to come out and you've got to do some extra work. This is at 3:30 this afternoon with Chad McCola. Some side flips that they're going to use. To try and get that lower half moving just a little bit more and help him get through the baseball. Well, you nearly think about what this coaching staff does. They log an awful lot of time, and you can see how intently Matol is locked in on Laurie at the plate. And Laurie's a challenge because he's got a lot of moving parts. He needs a bunch of at bats to get his rhythm down. The hands are moving, the legs are moving, everything is moving, and timing is critical. Bouncing ball, Euclid from third, gloves it, and it's not going to be in time. It wasn't pretty, but it's a hit. <laughs> Number one on the season for Brett Laurie. I'm not real sure that Kevin Euclid had a good handle on this ball. Laurie has smelled a base hit right here, and he's going to leg it out. How about that? Whew, got one. I got a batting <laughs> average now. He was 0 for 10 before that infield hit. You can see he's saying something that made Overbay laugh. <laughs> I didn't think I was ever going to get a hit. One out, Kobe Rasmus 0 for 2 against Pettit Lifetime. And anytime you're a runner over at first base and Andy Pettit is on the mound, be very careful. He's got one of the best pickoff moves ever. Rasmus fouls it. 0 oh and 2. Pettit has 104 career pickoffs. That's the most since it became a stat back in 1974. It wasn't an official stat until 74, and that it leads the pack. It's a healthy lead by Lori, but he just doesn't have it. He doesn't have a gauge on Pettit's move and throw over to first base. Yeah, you can get a big lead like that if it's a one-way lead, and that one way is back to first. One and two. Rasmus strikes out. Breaking ball. Bunch to mold down and away. And Pettit picks up his first strikeout of the night. He will go to a slider. When he has two strikes. And Rasmus comes up empty. Swinging on that one. Pettit has changed a little bit now as he has gotten older. And the types of pitches he likes to use with two strikes. It's all about adjustments, and there was a time that he could run that fastball up there in the mid 90s, yep. and that's not the case anymore. He could cut the ball in on the right handers also. Meiser restores the second baseman. Owen oh, Chu. Mentioned Andy Pettit won his first two starts and then dealt with some back spasms. His two waves at it and Pettit strikes out two 
after the infield hit to Brett Flory. We'll go to the third. Yankees have a 2-1 The Blue Jays will take on the Yankees. It starts at 1.07 p.m. There are special kids' price tickets in the 200 and 500 level outfield seats. After the game, kids 14 and under can run the bases just like the pros. Call the Blue Jays for tickets at 416-341-1234. You can always log on to BlueJays.com to order your tickets or stop by most Rogers Plus locations. Kevin Euclid was hit by a pitch and he came around to score in the first Has popped into right field. Davis has plenty of room. One down. It'll be interesting to keep an eye on Brandon Morrow and see where that velocity is this inning. Sometimes it'll come around, other times it can be one of those nights. Yep, yeah, and you're going to have to pitch. You're going to have to change speeds. You're going to have to hit your spots. Pitch backward if you have to. Brandon Morrow's never been a guy. You've had to pitch backwards with. Throw breaking balls and fastball counts and vice versa. It's always had that outstanding stuff. And he's had great numbers in his career versus the Yankees. Travis Hafner had an RBI double. In the first. Slider misses downstairs. Hafner. Drafted originally by the Texas Rangers and was traded early in his career to Cleveland. Now there's a good fastball, and that's where he needs to be yeah. with that fastball, that right his, down around the knees. That was his best fastball of the night, right there. Registered 94 on our gun here on pitch tracks. Ball on a strike. Shift for Hafner on the defense. And you see Brett Laurie out in shallow right. There's just a few players that the Blue Jays have said this year they're going to shift on. David Ortiz is one. Travis Hafner is another one. We just saw Adam Dunn in the last series. The Blue Jays shift on him. They were one of the the biggest shifting teams I guess you would say in the American League last year and it saved them a lot of runs. I think they had the second most runs saved by over shifting last year. And John Gibbons is really kind of put it in the players hands most of the time just to pay attention and put themselves in the right spot. Hafner crosses him up and goes opposite field. Melky Cabrera looking up home run Travis Hafner. An opposite field home run, his fifth home run of the season. And the Yankees have gotten that run back. 
when Travis Hafner was having those big years with the Cleveland Indians, he hit a lot of balls hard to left field. He had a season of over 40 home runs with the Indians. This time he goes opposite way and he's able to lift the ball. You can see that ball up about belt high and he goes right with it. Doesn't try and pull that one and just muscles it into the bullpen. Vernon Wells. Andre Strike with a changeup. Wells grounded out to second base his first time up, picked up an RBI. Drove home Kevin Euclid from third. The base hit skipped off the mound, goes into center. It's a fifth hit for the Yankees. They come into this game a pretty hot team offensively. They're still hitting home runs even though they've had all the injuries to their regulars. Veteran guys that they have picked up at the end of spring training have really gotten off to a good start. Vernon Wells came over from the Angels. Lyle Overbay was released by Boston. They signed him. Hafner. He has come up big. Brennan Bosch is on this team. Hafner's home run gives the Yankees home runs in 13 of their 15 games this year. So we thought that because Teixeira was out, Arod is out, Jeter's out, they lost Russell Martin, that they wouldn't be the Bronx Bombers anymore, and they lead the league. How about Grandy? 40 home runs. He's not in there, and they're still leading the American League and hitting. Ichiro rips it down the right field line. That's a fair ball. Vernon Wells is headed toward third, and the stop sign goes up. They missed the cutoff, man, but Wells had already stopped at third. So the Yankees are... All over Brandon Morrow early in this game. Home run single and double after one out here in the third. Yeah, lead, lead the league in home runs as John Gibbons doesn't want to wait around too long. Each year has that ability to wait back. That's that split grip change up to wait back, keep his hands back. And even though his lower half is going out of there and his shoulders are flying out of there he can still get good wood on the ball and send it to right field. Well we mentioned each year over the 340 career average against the Blue Jays he continues to hit them well. Eduardo Nunez popped out to the catcher. Neither pitcher has gotten too many borderline strike calls. No. Hitters will pick up on that. And if they feel like there is a tight strike zone, they will wait for one in their groove and let it go. Yankees lead it 3 1. There's a strike on the outside edge. Fifty one pitches for Morrow. And just about a 50 50 split balls to strikes. And the slider that Nunez swings right through. But Cecil is loosening up in the Jays pin. Second and third, one out. Shallow pop up in center. Wells is tagged at third. He bluffs. Rasmus' throw is a strong one. It kicks off of Aaron Sebian. Now here comes Wells. The ball got away from Aaron Sebian, and both runs will score as that will be an air. And the Yankees have cashed in. On the air by the Blue Jays. You know what? What you have to do if you're the cutoff man 
if you can read the runner and Wells bluffed, that ball should have been cut off. It was just really a tough play for Aaron Sebia. Watch it again. Encarnacion makes no attempt to try and cut the ball off or shield like you were trying to catch the ball. Wells wasn't going anywhere. He took like three steps and then stopped. That ball's got to be cut off because you have no idea where that ball's going to bounce around home plate. And unfortunately for the Blue Jays, it bounced wrong. Bounced in the dugout. Ichiro is able to score from second. Three runs in this inning. Now the ruling is on a throw from the outfield if it ends up out of play like in the dugout or someplace like that or in the stands it's two bases so each euro is at second base that's why he is allowed to score yeah any thrown ball on the field that goes out of play is two bases so each euro scores from second the air is charged to Rasmus Lyle Overbay the first baseman each euro doubled Hafner homered Wells single then each row double and then they scored two probably not going to be a sacrifice fly for Nunez because Wells had stopped so it'll be a fly out to the center field on your scoreboard Everybody was in the right positions there. Brandon Morrow was backing up behind home plate. J.P. and Sylvia was waiting for the throw. Just needed to be cut off right yeah. there. He certainly looked like a ball he could cut. But yeah, you watch the throw and you watch the runner. And if he holds up, just cut it off. Homer Bay is caught looking at strike three, but the Yankees put a three spot on the board in the third. Take advantage of a Blue Jays air. Well, the Blue Jays fans trying to encourage the home team. They trail 5 1. Andy Pettit on the mound delivers the first pitch to Winonori Kawasaki. Ball on the strike. Pettit snaked to a four run lead. Looking to 9 1 2 in the Blue Jays batting order here in the third. Now Saki fouls it off the umpire's mask. Fans, if you want your baseball question answered by our team of experts, email asktheexperts at sportsnet.ca and keep your eye out for the home hardware Ask the Expert segment later on in this game. Cervelli out to talk to Andy Pettit, more of a 
professional courtesy to the umpire after Mark Wagner got drilled in the mask with that one foul ball. Surprised. <laughs> you know, you're the umpire. The guy looks like he squares around to drop one down instead of getting it in the field of play. It's going to ricochet right off your face mask. Kawasaki strikes out. Foul chip held on to by Cervelli. Three straight strikeouts now for Pettit. Got Rasmus in his doors to end the second and gets Kawasaki to start the third. All breaking balls. Looks like he is using the fastball early in the count and then going to the number two later on to finish it off. You know, he is just a smart guy. We mentioned that he's 40 years old. He's been pitching forever. And his secret to his success is he feels he understands his body a little bit more. His mechanics are impeccable. And his command it says doesn't matter how hard you throw. If you have command of three pitchers, you get big league hitters out. And, and that's what he has done this year. Tajay Davis tripled and scored in the first, and he has hit headed hard throughout his career. He's now eight for 13 against the Yankee left-hander. His average up over 300. He's in the hole. Trying to use that backdoor cutter. I spoke to Rajay about Pettit earlier this afternoon, and he said, you know, he's changed a little bit. He'll throw that backdoor cutter a lot with two strikes, and that's what he did right there. Back in the day, it was inside to the right-handers, and he'd throw it to your back shoe. Now he like, has the ability to go outside with it. Andy Pettit has had a 500 record or better in each of his 17 big league seasons. One and two to Davis. Cut on and missed. Four in a row. Struck out by Pettit. And what is the primary job of a starting pitcher? Win ball games, just like you were saying. Better than 517 straight years again. There's that breaking ball underneath the bat. He says, I can throw any of my pitches whenever I want to. And that's the secret of his success since he has come back after retiring for a year. Okay, Cabrera, he knows all about Andy Pettit. They were teammates in New York. Malky's going through a little bit of a tough stretch. He grinded out in the first, but picked up an RBI. Pettit just makes you take funny swings. Inside, outside, add a little, take off a little. Just gives you so many different areas of the strike zone to worry about. And he just can't throw a ball straight. I think if he tried, I don't think he could throw a ball straight. Big hop for Euclid's third baseman. Andy Pettit sets down the Blue Jays in order in the third. He's retired five straight. Yankees up 5 1.
for weekdays at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 8 a.m. Pacific Time with Jeff Blair and Dirk Hayhurst. Listen on Sportsnet 590 The Fan and watch on Sportsnet 1. There's Jeff Blair, hard at work, getting his column prepared for the Globe and Mail and certainly does a great job on Baseball Central. He and Dirk Hayhurst weekdays at 11 Eastern Time. Francisco Cervelli, the number nine hitter. Well, you mentioned it, Cervelli. He does not get cheated. Nope. A lot of the Yankee hitters, they're all cut from the same cloth. They, they've got great strike zone awareness. They like to take a lot of pitches. Not this guy. He's going to go up there and he's going to be swinging. He's not going to get cheated. A big home run, like you mentioned in last night's game, that sent it to extra innings. And I like his quote afterwards. He said, yeah, I hit a home run in the ninth inning, send it to extra innings, and we lost. The main thing is to win. If I hit three home runs and we lose, it's not worth it. It's the first time Joe Girardi's Yankees have lost a game in which Francisco Cervelli had homered. It was six and one now in games that he's homered. He didn't hit many of them, but most of them have an impact in the outcome. Favorable way for New York. And there were some question marks, I think, at the beginning of this season when Russell Martin left. You know, who was going to take over as catcher? Is Cervelli an everyday guy or is Stewart the everyday guy? Bill Girardi's done a good job of mixing both of them in there. Morrow strikes out Cervelli, and that's how the top of the fourth begins. Tough stretch on the schedule. That's the first of 19 against New York, but the schedule. For the Blue Jays is heavily loaded with AL East teams. After this series, the Blue Jays will go to Baltimore, take on the Orioles, and then right back against the Yankees at Yankee Stadium next weekend. The only teams other than an NL East, or excuse me, an AL East team that the Blue Jays will face until June the first is Atlanta, San Francisco, and Seattle. Everybody else is within the division. Oh, that's good. Atlanta's they're not playing very yeah. well. 13 and 2. Maybe they'll cool off by the time <laughs> we see them. Well, one good thing they can't get any hotter. <laughs> what a great start to their season. Atlanta. Really kind of a surprise in my mind. Really? I just think not having Brian McCann, I thought that was going to be a concern. And we know they got good pitching. Gardner with a big cut. I just didn't know that Justin Upton would get off to such a great start. I kind of thought it might take him a while, but boy, he stepped right in there and took off with the Braves. Were you taking into consideration the Chipper Jones retirement factor? Yeah, that had something to it. A lot of it. people thought, thought about that, too. Chris Johnson's done a good job yeah. filling in at third. Well, it's a simple formula. Well, not so simple to go out there and do, but a simple formula that they have. Just get the lead late in the game and turn it over to that fantastic bullpen. Hit a lot of home runs. They've got like seven guys who can hit 25 home runs in their lineup. Home runs and relief pitching. Going to win you a lot of games. They've hit 29 home runs already this season. Gardner strikes out. Brandon Morrow. He has three in a row now. A little bit better fastball. You know, mixing it up too. At that time, it looked like he wanted to go up against Brett Gardner, and he just couldn't catch up to it. Threw a couple of fastballs by him in that at bat and then he picks in that breaking ball. He'll be just fine. Robinson Cano. Goes after the first pitch. This is trouble. It's going to get down for a base hit. Melky Cabrera waits on it. Cano has his second hit of the night. Here is the pitch. Watch where it is on the inner half. And this is what he was working with Kevin Long earlier this afternoon. Fastballs on the inner half. You see they got that screen set up there so he keeps his hands inside the ball and the barrel comes through. 
Get it along, fires that ball on the inner half, trying to shorten up that swing and make sure your hands stay inside the baseball. It's an interesting drill. They set up that screen so Cano won't extend down over the plate, keeps his hands close to his body and really fires that barrel through the zone. You know, it also keeps you from going around the baseball. You, you don't want to go around the baseball and hook the ball. You want to go through it. And it's great drill. Take a look at it one more time. That's that screen set up on the outside part of the plate. So if you reach out away from your body, your bat's going to hit that screen. And you can see how short that swing is from Robinson Cano. Bounced in the dirt, and Aaron Seavey did a good job of playing it off his chest protect to keep Cano at first. Marl buried that breaking ball in the dirt, and Aaron Seavey did a good job. Going for the punch out, it's down low, and just get any kind of piece of your body on that. I like how he punched over a little bit, so when it hit him in the chest protector, it went straight down. One and two, two outs. Cano's on the move. Euclid fouls it off. Cano doesn't run a lot, but felt like that was a good time to try to steal a bag. I'm guessing that Brandon Morrow was going to throw another breaking ball. Maybe try and bury it out of the strike zone. Euclid is just two for 14 for his career against Morrow. He goes around. Make that two for 15 as he strikes out. Morrow strikes out the side. Now it's up to the hitters to get back in this game. It'll be Bautista in Carnacion. And Aaron Sebia meted the order for the Jays when we come back. Jays game this season on Sportsnet live on your smartphone. Visit slash sports to get started. Good Friday night crowd on hand here at Rogers Center. Jose Bautista back in the lineup after missing four straight with a back problem. Blue Jays are down by four. Bautista walked in the first. Pops this one up into right. Suzuki moves underneath it, one down.
The 2013 Honda CRV, an IIHS top safety pick. Honda is the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Indoor baseball here at Rogers Center. A little cool this afternoon, about 45 degrees. It's cooled off a little bit tonight. Kind of drizzling all afternoon here in Toronto. There's that backdoor breaking ball. He drops on the outside corner. I'm sure, those hitters can't wait till it turns up to about 75 or 80. That's when the ball really starts to fly in this ballpark. Andy Pettit is the only pitcher drafted by the Yankees to win 200 games in the majors. All those great teams they've drafted a lot of great pitchers and Pettit's the only one that has 200 career wins. Now I, I know the draft was in 1965 yep. so it's only from that up but they had great teams in the 70s and in the 90s. Ron Guidry was one of the drafted mm -hmm. players. Pettit's the only one the only pitcher drafted by the Yankees to have over 200 career wins. He won 21 games in 96 and led the AL in wins, finished second to Pat Henkin in the Cy Young voting. Pat's now out in the bullpen. Pettit is still pitching. And then something. Wow. And he took a year off. He felt like he had had enough baseball. And then once he sat home, he said, you know what? I still think I can do it. Boy, kind of showing foul that ball off his foot, and it looked like he stepped right on top of it. It was laying on the ground. We were talking about how he'll throw that breaking ball inside, so it's right towards your back foot. And that time, Edwin swung over the top of tipped it. It looked like it went right off his back shoe, and certainly it did. Wow. One and two. Outside. But Pettit works you all over in that zone, inside, outside, couple down the middle, but he's changing speeds and changing location with just about every pitch. Went back and looked at his last start. That was 10 days ago with the Yankees versus the Cleveland Indians. He threw a lot of fastballs and sliders. There was a big number for him, the variation of the miles per hour between the slider and the cutter. How difficult is it for a hitter to cover that many different spots in the strike zone? You don't zone? get any type of rhythm. You don't get any kind of feel of what he's going to do. You either have to reach for the ball or you've got to think about the ball inside. I mean, that's what pitching is all about. And he is able to make those in-game adjustments and repeat his delivery. I think that's why he has been successful here at age 40. Eight pitches and there's just no place for Encarnacion to zero in on Nine pitch at bat. Well, one thing that you can tell from a nine pitch at bat, Edwin's seeing the ball. And when you're seeing the ball, pretty soon you're going to start hitting it. And he hits this one deep to center. Brett Gardner will break it down right in front of the warning track for the second out of the inning. That is what is called making the adjustments and moving the ball around the strike zone. You see pitch one was in against Encarnacion and then the last one was down but all in between and remember that's just the cutter and the slider and the curveball. We saw a fastball in that sequence. That's why he makes it tough to hit and a lot of young pitchers can can take that and, and watch this guy throw you don't have to throw 95 to get hitters out you just have to keep them off balance and he says three pitches that I can throw anytime whenever I want to and I can get major league hitters out And 
Sebier hits it off the end of the bat. That last start I was talking about, about the Indians 10 days ago before he hurt his back. His cutter, the average speed on his cutter was 89 miles an hour. Now he's got a pitch that's just like that. His slider averaged 83 miles per hour. That's a good difference for the same type of pitch. Aaron Sebia chases a high fastball. Andy Pettit has settled in nicely. Middle innings. Blue Jays are down 5-1. Now it's time for Blue Jays Central Update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the BlackBerry Broadcast Studio. Brandon Mara has struck out four of the last five batters he's faced. He had a tough start to his ball game. Gave up two runs on two hits in the first, and then three runs in the third. But just one of those was an earned run as the Blue Jays committed in there. Hafner off to a good start tonight. Doubled in the first, drove in a run, and then had a one-out home run to the opposite field in the third. He looks like the Travis Hafner of a few years ago. Yeah, he's healthy. And that's the problems that he had after he had those big seasons with the Indians. Health. Change up misses up and away. Hafner played just 66 games a year ago with Cleveland, and he underwent knee surgery May 31st on his right knee. 31st round pick of the Texas Rangers in 96. Morrow missing with all three pitches up out of the strike zone. 3 and 0 oh, and I'd be careful on this pitch. Appear to be taking all the way. It's a strike. Thought they might turn him loose also. Why not? He had a double yeah. and a home run his first two at bats. Seeing the ball quite nice. And he, again, he's been one of those guys in his career where he will work the count, get himself into a good hitting position. He gets jammed on this one and pops it up behind home plate. Aaron Sebia makes the catch. Good bounce back by Morrow. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. By Marl fell behind 3 0, but gets Hafner to pop up. Vernon Wells has an RBI and single tonight already. It's this one right to the second baseman is Sturis doing Carnesio two down. 
Kaiser Astoris looks a little more comfortable at second than he did over at third with the return of Brett Laurie now. That's probably where he's going to do most of his play. And he has played at third base in his career. He's played a lot of games over at third base, but just didn't look comfortable early in this season, especially throwing the ball across the diamond. But at second base, he looked great. So is Brett at third base. Jack Morris had a chance to see him for the first time defensively and he was amazed at his his range at third base. We told him we said wait you see this guy play third. <laughs> yeah that Lori he hasn't missed a beat defensively so far. Ichiro Suzuki in the hole 0 and 2. Ichiro coming over to the Yankees was asked if he wanted his familiar number 51 and he said no 51 for the Yankees that's Bernie Williams. I'll take 31. He gets jammed and pops this one up. Brandon Morrow a good inning just nine pitches and he dispatches the Yankees in the fifth. Listen to live audio follow games pitch by pitch and enjoy in game video highlights. The app is available on the iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch, Android, and Blackberry Z10. Season long subscription packages are available for $19.99. Visit BlueJays.com for more details. Brett Flory has his second hit, takes a big turn around first, and he'll stop there. Tommy Rasmus will step in against Andy Pettit, and these guys have a history. Let's go back to 1999. This is 12 year old Kobe Rasmus on the field at Yankee Stadium with Andy Pettit. Yankees bring in the Little League champions every year. Kobe Rasmus was just 12 year old, 1999, meeting Andy Pettit on the field. And now here they meet at Rogers Center. How about that? That's pretty awesome. Great picture, and these two meet again. Colby Rasmus struck out against Pettit his first time up. Rasmus this season against lefties is two for 11. He's hit two doubles, but now he has eight strikeouts against lefty pitching. You know, I'd hate to take a strength away from Colby Rasmus, and his strength is yanking the baseball. He can get out there and pull everything. But the way he's swinging right now, he might want to think about the middle of the field right now. Pulling off of a lot of off speed pitches. Bounced in the dirt. And that's why Pettit will feed that to him. But again, his strength is you know, when you make a mistake, he can yank the ball out of the ballpark. Or hit the ball down the right field corner like we saw the other night. 
chops this one up. Euclid shuffling into foul territory. Rasmus is retired, and we talked about Kobe Rasmus playing in the Little League World Series. Going in back a and look at Kobe Rasmus, the 99 Rasmus. Little League World Series. He was a pitcher back then and a hitter. That looks familiar. That swing right there, hitting another ball to right center field. The throwing motion's the same. The swing looks the same. And I don't know about the dance steps. <laughs> Colby having some fun. Uh, that's great history going back to that Little League World Series and Colby Rasmus in. Andy Pettit reunited here tonight at Rogers Center. Meister Astoris, second baseman. But Glory at first with his second hit of the night. Speed pitch and his tourist was fooled. He's having trouble seeing the ball from Andy Pettit. Took out his first time up on a change up. You don't have to wait back just a little bit longer. Maybe shoot a ball to right field. Just to break it up a little bit, Pettit goes to first. For the double play. Second double play the Blue Jays have hit into tonight. We'll go to the 6 5 1 New York. Headed to the top of the six, and here comes the home hardware cleanup crew brought to you by Natura, home hardware's exclusive line of safe, environmentally protected cleaning products. Twenty first when the Blue Jays and Yankees wrap up this three game set. It's presented by the Toronto Star. The first twenty thousand fans will receive an Edwin Encarnacion bobblehead. Call the Blue Jays for tickets at 416-341-1234. Log on to BlueJays.com or stop by most Rogers Plus locations. Short stop at Water Nunez. Oh for two. Should reach the seats and kind of seal over to give it a look. Of course, Pat mentioned earlier Derek Jeter 
It was discovered has a new fracture in his injured ankle and he is not going to be back until sometime after the All Star break, if at all. What do you think about that statement? Sometime after the All Star break. Yeah, I just think it's going to be a long shot. Yeah. I mean, when you first hear that, it's like July. That could be September 1st. Yeah, it could be a long time yeah. before we see Derek Jeter. Popped up on the infield a mile high. Kawasaki is Storis, and it's his Storis, and they didn't communicate very well there. Nunez is out on the pop up, and we talk about injuries, and the Blue Jays have had their share of injuries, but. This is something that everybody has to deal with. And they have lost some key guys. You mentioned Jeter. Curtis Granderson broke his arm in spring training. A-Rod had hip surgery. Mark Teixeira has a wrist problem. And Joe Girardi hasn't had his frontline staff at all. Bob Overbay drills it high and deep to center. And this ball is gone. Overbay. Hit one to the wall in left field back in the second, and here he goes deep to center. His second home run of the season. Well, there's something to be said after you leave a team, you come back and you try and do something positive against them. Try to prove that they made a mistake when they let you go for a while over there. It's been a long time since he played for the Toronto Blue Jays. He hasn't forgotten how to hit in this ballpark here. That ball down and away. He's always been a guy who's had a lot of extra base hits. Goes right with that one. You mentioned the one he just missed his first time up in the second inning. He doesn't miss this time. Albert Bay played with the Blue Jays from 2006 through 2010. He had 83 home runs as a member of the Blue Jays with a 268 average. His swing looks pretty good. We've seen him free at bats tonight and he has always been a guy that's got good opposite field power. That was a good pickup by the Yankees at the end of spring training after the Red Sox let him go. There was thoughts of Juan Rivera playing first base for the Yankees. He was released right at the end of spring training and they got him from the Red Sox. That was a nice move. He didn't sign until March 26th. Number nine hitter is Francisco Cervelli. 6 1 New York. Cervelli drives it to right. Long run for Davis. He missed it. He tried to slide to break himself before he hit that wall, but reached for it and missed it. And the ball bounced out of play. It'll be the second double of the night for Cervelli. He had a play like this a couple of nights ago where he ran a long way. And was unable to come up with it. That's a catchable ball in right field. Dealing with the the walls, very got a couple of feet out there. Brandon Morrow was hoping that he could come up with that one. Right field, as opposed to left field, that ball is going to twist from either a lefty or a righty. Is going to just keep drifting towards the foul line. You have to remember that. It's always going to slice away from you. John Gibbons has already made the call to the bullpen. So Brandon Morrow will leave this game with one out in the sixth. To hands off to John Gibbons, the left-hander Brett Cesa will come into the ball game to face the top of the order. Brett Gardner, Robinson Cano when we come back.
contest, part of the Sportsnet charity broadcast auction. Make a donation of $50 or more to the Jays Care Foundation before April 24th, and you'll automatically be entered into the All Access Contest. You could win the ultimate Blue Jays experience. Also, an opportunity to throw out the ceremonial first pitch before a Blue Jays game, a batting practice visit, and a meet and greet with John Gibbons. For more information, visit bluejays.com slash broadcast auction. Wednesday, May 1st. Brett Cecil comes on in relief with one out here in the sixth and a man at second. Last time we saw Brett was on Sunday, the last day of that road trip in Kansas City. He's had a couple of days off. He's out and off to a really good start. Seven games, no record, no run run average either. And he's done a very nice job so far in the early goings versus lefties. Lefties hitting 077 against Brett this year. His fastball's got a little bit more to it. Than what we have seen over the last couple of seasons. Brandon Morrow goes five and a third and is charged with six runs so far. So Valley at second is his responsibility. Cecil has been effective because he's been aggressive, pitching ahead. He had a great four pitch strikeout of Mike Mustakis in Kansas City when he came on with two outs and made quick work of the lefty. Yeah, he used his fastball in that series. Went back to back days and had strikeouts in both of those. There's a 94 mile an hour heater that Gardner is late on. This is the difference in Cecil working out of the pen. He knows he's not going to be out there for an extended period of time like when he was a starter, so he can air it out. Yeah, you don't have to worry about three times through the lineup. You can go an inning or two, or you can pick your spots and maybe just use them against the left hander. Gardner drills this to center. Rasmus is not going to get it. It bounces off the wall up against the fence. Cervelli is around third. Gardner is headed for third. Here's the throw. Not in time. Brett Cecil comes in and gives up an RBI triple to Brett Gardner. Cervelli scores. First triple of the season for Gardner. He can run, and if you make a mistake, he's got a little pop in his bat. Outfield was shallow against Gardner, not thinking they can drive a ball over his head, and he got a hold of that pitch. Drove at the center field, and that great speed will leg that one out at third base, and now the infield has to come in. Blue Jays cannot afford to give up any more runs. Yankees keep adding on runs. It's now 7 1 New York. Robinson Cano, two for three already. Infield is in. Cecil gets ahead of Cano. Yankees lost last night in 12 innings. They lost six to two. And over the last nine, they've won seven of their last nine, and they've been averaging about six runs a game. So their offense, they're still hitting home runs, which is a surprise with all the injuries, but they're coming up with the big hits. Hitting with runners in scoring position, and they're getting everybody up and down the lineup to contribute. Two more home runs tonight. They've now hit 24 home runs. Ball on the strike. This perfect time to bring Cecil in with Gardner and Cano, two left handers, with a chance to get out of the inning. But Gardner messed up that strategy with an RBI triple. As he knocks it down, Gardner broke on contact and comes in to score. Cano will pick up the RBI. He now has 13 as Gardner is cashed in from third. Brandon Morrow's line is complete. Goes five and a third. He is charged with five earned runs, nine hits, walked a batter, and struck out four. Just didn't have that. Command the ability to get ahead early in the ball game, and the Yankees took advantage of that. Kevin Euclid. Two outs. 
second three run inning of the night for New York. They scored three in the third. Now three more here in the sixth. Boy, it has been a tight strike zone all night long, but Mark Wagner has been consistent. He's been tied with Pettit as well. Yeah, both teams. And that's all that you can ask for. Three and no count to Euclid. Travis Hafner's on deck. Left handed DH has doubled and homered tonight. This takes one right on the outside corner. Hafner had a double to right and a home run to left. Ball is five out of play. Blue Jays had just four hits in last night's game in a winning effort against Chicago tonight. Just three hits. The offense just hasn't kicked in yet. Yeah, shut out two nights ago against the White Sox. And what were we saying before the game? They've won a game with two hits this year, and they've won a game with four hits this year. It's a good offense, just hasn't found its way yet. Euclid hits it high into left, but that'll stay in the yard. Melky Cabrera shuffling back. The inning is over. But the Yankees had three more runs. They've taken an 8 1 lead. We head to the bottom of the sixth. Ride and Kawasaki has always looked up to Ichiro as a star in Japan and now in the big leagues, and their swings are very similar. <laughs> a little bit more power position, I think, for Ichiro when he sets up. But the finish looks about the same. They use their hands very well. Ichiro, a little stronger position in his setup. Kawasaki, more of a slap hitter than Ichiro. Slaps this one to third. Euclid recovers in time. Nice play by the Yankee third baseman. He knocked it down, grabbed it barehanded, and threw a strike to first. As I said earlier in the game, as a third baseman against a lefty, you've got to come in respecting the button when they slap it at you. Kind of take as you take you by surprise. It's not a ball that happens a lot. You don't see a lot of third basemen hit it or left-handed hitters hit it to the third baseman. But Euclid has been around. He has seen it before and makes a nice play to get the first out. Euclid won a gold glove as a first baseman. And he's been back and forth across the time a couple of different times. Rajay Davis goes after the first pitch and it's a lazy fly ball to center. Two quick outs for Pettit in the sixth. 
Andy Pettit looking for his third straight win to start the season. He hasn't won three straight to start a season since 97. He started the 96 and the 97 seasons winning his first three games. That's the last time he's done that. And getting closer and closer to the most wins in Yankee history. By the lefty. Whitey Ford, 236. Andy Pettit came into this game with 210 as a Yankee. There's his strength. I think Pettit too. When you think about Andy Pettit, you think about the great postseason run where he pitched so many games in the postseason. Elke Cabrera has a hit. Pettit wasn't happy with it. Don't think he left one out over the plate, and Cabrera took care of it. Looked like he changed up on him. Threw him a change up. That off-speed pitch wasn't the cutter. It didn't look like it might was the slider. I think it was a change up just enough and out over the plate for Melky to get a base hit and watch the reaction from Pettit. That's not what I'm supposed to do. Jose Bautista with two outs takes his strength. That reaction by Pettit reminded me of the thought. I knew he'd hit that. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have thrown that. Bautista out in front of that off speed pitch. Boy, Pettit's mixed him up perfectly yeah. tonight, hasn't he? Went back and looked again at his last start. Very effectively mixing up his pitches. You can get a fastball, his slider, curveballs, cutter, and his changeup. All of them but the cutter and changeup threw about the same amount of pitches. Bautista laid off that low breaking ball. Pettit with five strikeouts tonight. That's the most he's struck out early in this season. Struck at four last time out against Cleveland in a 14 1 whitewashing. Team supporting Andy Pettit very well. He gets eight runs here tonight, had 14 in his last start. It is first on the active win list among pitchers. 247 wins. Bautista hits him high and deep to center, and this one's going to sail out of the ballpark. Bautista to dead center. His third career home run against Andy Pettit. That's what they came here for. To see Jose Bautista in the lineup, he got a big ovation when he was announced in the lineup, and they want to see a home run, and they get one. Looked like Pettit was really trying to change speeds on him, really trying to get him out on that front foot, something we saw the Kansas City Royals do, and he just threw one too many. Right down over the plate, and Jose smacks it. A little life in this stadium, and it didn't look like there were any problems with the back. Nope, nothing wrong with that one. That was a line drive that got up into that restaurant mm -hmm. in dead center. Bautista can turn things around in a heartbeat. A little reinforcement from Chad Matola. Get that with two strikes and say, you know what, you don't have to swing for a home run every time and obviously Jose knows that. That was a pretty swing. Yeah, just put a good swing on the baseball. And Pressione rips it right to Euclid and somehow Euclid kept his glove on. That ball was blistered. 
Jose Bautista connects his fourth home run of the season. It's a deep shot to center, a two run homer, but the Yankees still lead 8 3. that received a free seat upgrade tonight courtesy of TD enjoy the ball game and right across the stadium over in the Jays Community Care Clubhouse it's the East Scarborough Boys and Girls Club have a good night here at Rogers Center welcome and enjoy the ball game good turnout tonight first of three against New York 40,000 28 on hand and there's a little buzz after that Jose Bautista home run. Let's see. So he's got to put up a couple of zeros here. Yeah, just to give him a chance. Get a couple of guys on it. We've talked about this too much. That when you fall behind by multiple runs like that. You got to cut a couple of guys on run into one and maybe take your chance as Aaron Sebia gets hit once again on a foul tip. Two times tonight that he has been hit. Ball is skipped past the catcher all the way back to the screen. It's a ball and a strike. Well, oh, he's off to a good start. Nothing like a good start for a new player. Onto a ball club, you get over there and you say, "Okay, well, I just want to get off to a decent start." And boy, Hafner with five home runs has gotten more than he'd hoped for. Yeah, he was signed late in the off season, February of this past year. And when you go to a new club, you want to validate that, and you want to say, "Hey, you know, I belong." Been battling injuries over the last few years. That home run he hit a couple of innings ago looked like the half nerve of about 10 years ago with the Indians. Yeah, he gets beat with that inside fastball. Yeah, he was one of the most feared power hitters because he could hit the ball the opposite field. Blue Jays know all about Travis Hafner. He had a walk off grand slam in 2011 in Cleveland off Luis Perez. Breaking ball went around the inside corner. If you're just joining in and looking at pitch tracks, you say, well, there's five strikes. How come he's still back? But Mark Wagner, the home plate umpire, has really had a conservative strike zone, but it's been on both teams all night long. This time after strikes out. The 2013 Honda CRV and IIHS top safety pick. Honda is the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. 
We mentioned the Yankees in town for the first time this season. They always are a good draw. 40,000 and 28 fans on hand. First of three in the hometown fans like to see Blue Jays not a comeback. Vernon Wells. Fans have been great this year, haven't they? Coming out the Rogers Center. They have come out in big numbers, and now Blue Jays would love to have a big comeback with a whole yeah. bunch of fans on hand. Send them home with a W. Brennan Wells was traded middle of the spring from the Angels to the Yankees, and of course, with the Yankees suffering injuries to Granderson, to share A Rod, they needed a veteran presence to put in the outfield. This is popped up behind home, and Sevilla will give it a look back by the screen, and it's over the screen out of play. The Yankees have had key injuries, and you talk about a roster of all stars and gold lovers. Derek Jeter is out with the ankle injury. You mentioned they discovered a new fracture in that ankle. Alex Rodriguez, there's no time frame for his return. Mark Deshare starting to have what they call dry swings, not even having a bat yet. And Curtis Granderson broke his arm in spring training, and he is just now starting to go through the hitting motion with a fungal bat. There's a long drive to left and you can forget about this one. Vernon Wells has just gone deep his fourth homer of the season and the Bronx Bombers are bombing. Leading the American League in home runs. Vernon Wells with number four. We've seen this before. For many years when he was with the Blue Jays, that fastball down and in, and he can still drop the head of that bat on that fastball. Vernon Wells hit 223 home runs with the Blue Jays, and he knows what it feels like to hit one here at Rogers Center. Cecil tried to slip that one by him, but he was too quick for him. How about a couple of Blue Jays doing some damage tonight? Mile Overbay hit one to center. Now Wells goes deep to left. Looked like they wanted that ball away. Came back over the middle of the plate. Suzuki takes a strike. It's one and one. Ichiro Suzuki. If you combine his hit total from Japan and put it together with his hit total here in the States, he is third all time in total hits. Rose, Cobb, and Suzuki. Is he over 4,000? Or he's got to be really close if you combine them. 38 84 coming into this season. Wow. Three and one from Cecil. Five ball in the right. Davis gets a beat on it, makes the catch. Two down. Yankees have out hit the Blue Jays 11 to 5. The Blue Jays offense just hasn't kicked in gear yet. Nunez has been shut out. He's 0 for 3. Zeso is coming out of his delivery, and that ball is staying up and away. Yeah, it looked like he's reaching back for a little something extra. Get it in there, and when you talk about coming out of your delivery, your arm drags just a little bit. You can see those first two pitches up and away. There's another one. Probably going to be his last inning, no matter what. You had mentioned Cecil 
is well rested. Hasn't pitched since Kansas City. Only threw 10 pitches in two thirds of an inning. You want to keep him fresh. Got out of the last inning. And now this inning here. I think if they push him and throw one more inning after this, you might miss him for two or three more days. He is up to 33 pitches. Nunez walks. A two out walk issued by Brett Cecil. Top of the seventh inning. Yankees got off to a fast start. They scored two in the first on two doubles. We mentioned the Yankees this season coming into this game were 5 and 0 oh when they scored first. Just 3 and 6 when the opponents score first. You know, even though they've had the injuries that they've had this year, they've replaced them with veterans. You don't panic. They put up good at bats. And they know how to win. Well, and they have the resources to go out and bring in veteran players that are more expensive. Ober Bay was released by the Red Sox in spring training. They didn't hesitate. They picked him right up. They needed a first baseman. Lyle's a very good first baseman. I don't care what he does for you with the bat. He can play first. Yeah, he is excellent with the glove. I thought that was a great pickup. When Teixeira got hurt, and then they, they're still sticking to Teixeira coming back in May. But if the injury is the same as the type of injury that Bautista had, we know how that went for Jose last year. Yeah, I'm going to go on record. That will surprise me if he's back in the middle of May. Overbay pops this one up there, and Sevian puts the mask aside. He's back by the screen and makes the catch. The ball came back over the playing field, and Overbay is retired. A couple of Blue Jays, former Blue Jays going deep here tonight. Over Bay first and then Wells in the seventh. Nine three as the Yankees have jumped all over Blue Jays pitching tonight. Blue Jays have just five hits tonight. What are they going to do to get those bats going a bit? Just grind out at bats just a little bit better. Pettit's a guy who's going to be around the strike zone, so you, when you get your pitch, don't miss it. I think you can grind out at bats, see a little bit more. I think at, at times they they swing for the fences a little bit too much. Their, their swings are a little bit long, and that. Allows pitchers to pitch to them, find holes in their swing. A little bit more consistent approaches at the plate will get the Blue Jays going offensively. And Sevian just missed the bag at third. 
Yeah, I agree with that 100%. I, I think the Blue Jay hitters swinging for the fences has something to do with falling behind early. You've got a lot of makeup, and that puts pressure on the offense to put up crooked numbers and take you out of your good approach. JP's had a good approach this year. He has hit the ball to right center field. That's why the outfield is really bunching him now. Tapped up the third baseline. Euclid is not going to have a play. And Aaron Sevia has an infield hit. Pettit didn't have a chance to make a play. Euclid was deep at third, guarding against the power of Aaron Sevia, and he gets himself a swing at money. Slider, you swing, and you're right over the top of that. You look up after you hit a ball like that and you can see where the third baseman is playing. You say, if I can get down that line, I'm going to get myself an infield hit, and JP does just that. Brett Laurie, he's got two hits and two trips to the plate tonight. Goes after the first pitch and hits one in to right. Ichiro Suzuki makes the catch. Laurie's retired. Andy Pettit working in the seventh. Pettit went eight innings in his first start of the season back on the 4th of April against Boston at home. And then seven innings last time out. And check out the number of pitches it took him. He's very efficient. 94 in the first, 97 in the second. Well, we Rasmus goes after the first pitch. High fly ball. Brett Gardner makes the catch. So after Aaron Sevia leads things off with a swinging bunt, Lori goes after the first pitch and fouls up, pops up, and then Rasmus goes after the first and pitch. And I think that's the difference between a veteran team like the Yankees and a young team hitter wise like the Blue Jays. Pet it through the first pitch to Brett Lori, 74 miles an hour. It was an off speed pitch. Now, if you go up there looking for that pitch and you swing at pop up, that's fine. But you can't tell me that you're going up there looking for an off speed pitch of 74. Yeah. And especially when you're down by six. Yeah. So if he throws that pitch and you're not looking for it, let it go. Let it go and live for another pitch. His Torres goes after the first pitch. So after the infield hit by Aaron C to lead things off, Pettit throws three pitches and gets the next three outs. Just seven pitches in the inning. The simulation of who they thought the Blue Jays player of the game would be. The video game version picked Brandon Morrow. You look at Brandon Morrow's simulated game, seven innings, four hits, 
actual story, a little bit different. But you can bet Brandon Moyle will throw more games like the simulation than what he did tonight. Yeah, and the other games where he got no decisions and where he pitched and gave up two or, or fewer runs. Tonight, the fastball hit looked like it was there early in the game, and he battled back with a couple of breaking balls and a good changeup. The predictor is brought to you by MLB 13, the show only on PS3 and Vita. Available in stores now. See Delbar into the game, the third pitcher for the Blue Jays tonight. There's what he has done through seven games one and one, 312 earned run average. Last worked in that Chicago series. He took a loss in that series, one inning. Problem was finding the plate. He had three walks in his inning in the third. Through 36 pitches in an inning and a third, and that's uncharacteristic for Delamar. Cross behind Cervelli. You can bet Cervelli's in the swing mode. <laughs> He's had a couple of doubles tonight. Sandwiched around the strikeout. Cervelli spent most of last season in Triple A. Played 99 games in Triple A Scranton Wilkesbury. Up and over the Yankee dugout. Out of play. Wayne Murphy, now the first base coach, still obviously has some insight as to the hit hitting aspect mm -hmm. of the game. Been hitting coach for a long time, and he and Bautista having a chat. That's the luxuries of being a DH. You don't have to go on the field. You can think about hitting, talk hitting, go up and watch some videos in between your at bats. And you can see that that's what they're talking about. I think, too, Bautista is anxious for the team to turn things around. The ball in the dirt. A full count. Blue Jays bullpen has worked a lot. Starters early in the season haven't pitched deep into ball games, and the bullpen has been called upon a lot. Now Delabar walks the first batter he faces in the eighth. Back to the top of the order. Brett Gardner. Let off. Against CISO. He came into the game in the sixth with one out. And Gardner was the first batter CISO faced. He had a triple to straightaway center. There's a strike. He's not afraid to hit with one strike. He takes a lot of pitches. Always has. Yes. He's always been among the leaders in pitches seen for at bat. Four, four and a half is about average for him per plate appearance, which is excellent. Another ball hit to center. This one's not going to carry, and Rasmus runs it down. Delamar checks with second see who's got coverage on comebacker and he'll work with Robinson Cano. Cano's a free agent after this season. You think he's going to be a Yankee next year? Yes, I do. <laughs> he's got a new agent right before the regular season started. And there are some connections to New York Jay-Z's group. How about that? Robinson Cano as Jay Z is his agent. Is it Rock? Is that the name of the uh, Rock Enterprises? I think so, like yeah. That? Entertainment and obviously Jay Z has been very successful in his own world and now he wants to venture into the sports world. Robinson Cano, Cano must have a lot of confidence in him. Well, there's a base hit to right. I don't think he's going anywhere. Myself, the Yankees would be crazy 
not to just give him whatever he wants. And say, Robinson, what do you want? You want 200 million? You got it. Because you can't let this guy go. I think he is becoming the face of the franchise for the Yankees. Splitter from Delabar and good hitters can reach all of those pitches and find holes with it. Three hits for Cano tonight. He is now 17 for his last 39. Number three hitter is Kevin Euclid. Euclid goes after the first pitch, lines it right to Davis in right. Jays beat the Yankees here at home last year in the season series. They won five of the nine games. Different story in New York. They were just two and seven at Yankee Stadium. Two outs. The DH Travis Hafner. Fouls off the first pitch. Blue Jays have thrown a lot of pitches up in the zone tonight. And as a result, the Yankees have produced 12 hits and nine runs. Three home runs hit by New York, Hafner, Overbay, and Wells. It's a good idea right there. When you've got that type of fastball, 96 miles an hour. I think you got to stay in on Travis Hafner. His home run was a pitch that was out over the plate, and he was able to extend through it and go right with it. I think you have to stay in on him. Popped up in the fifth inning on a good pitch from Brandon Morrow that was crowding him. Fastball in the inner half. Another good cut. We haven't seen this bat speed from Travis Hafner in a few years. No. He looks dangerous at the plate again. He's had some back problems in his career, and that's twice tonight I've seen him swing at pitches, foul him off, and feel his lower back. But you're right, bat speed. He's had some shoulder problems where he can't get the bat hit through. First and second. Two outs. Delabar strikes out after the Yankees leave a pair. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth. It's 9-3 New York. Now it's time for Blue Jays Central Update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the Blackberry Broadcast Studio.
by Baseball Canada and Little League Canada. St. John's, Newfoundland, July 15th, 16th, and 17th. The Super Camp will be at Airport Heights Field. The instructors include Roberto Alomar, Lloyd Mosby, Homer Bush, Devon White, and Dwayne Ward. Visit BlueJays.com slash Baseball Academy for more information. The Blue Jays are proud supporters of amateur baseball across Canada. Kawasaki hits the first pitch from Pettit. That's four outs on four pitches. Pettit has thrown just 90 pitches, and Joe Girardi with the jog out, left handed batter, Kawasaki. And now back to the top of the order, and you can see Joe Girardi. He said, Andy, I got you. And Girardi used to have Pettit from behind the plate. Those two <laughs> teamed up as a battery early in Pettit's career. So Andy Pettit leaves the ball game with one out in the eighth. Sean Kelly on in relief. And a third. Oh, well, the Blue Jays just six hits, three earned runs. He walked the batter and struck out five, and he did it on just 90 pitches. So, for the third time already this season, Andy Pettit goes at least seven innings in each of his starts. Makes the job of the manager a lot easier when he has to go to the bullpen when your starter can get you into the eighth inning. Andy Pettit looked like the Andy Pettit of old, using all of his pitches, getting him in the strike zone, changing speeds. And now he'll turn it over to Sean Kelly. Four games for Kelly. Things haven't gone his way so far. A whip just under two. He does have a heavy sinking fastball in the low 90s. He'll use a slider for strikeouts and a changeup also. Another one of those good arms that the Seattle Mariners gave up. They are loaded with good arms, so they had an excess and they could move Kevin. Really a Bonifacio pinch hitting for Rajay Davis. Ball in the strike. John Gibbons will go back and forth between Davis and Bonifacio probably the rest of this weekend until Bautista is ready to play in right. I think it's smart what the Blue Jays are doing is taking their time with Jose. And it's a nice thing to have a DH where he can get his bat in the lineup. And he doesn't have to play defense. Just ease him back. Three and one. Kelly is 28 years old. Bonifacio takes a strike. It's full. Fifth game he has worked against the Blue Jays. Only thrown a total of four and a third. All in relief. And Ivasio strikes out. Pettit struck out five. Now Kelly strikes out the first batter he faces. That's two outs in the bottom of the eighth.
Good crowd on hand, over 40,000 here tonight for the first of three against the Yankees. Melky Cabrera singled against Pettit his last time up back in the sixth. Drives this ball to left. Vernon Wells coasts back and John Kelly gets the final two outs of the inning. Just eight pitches retires the Blue Jays in the eighth. Darren Oliver on. By the Blue Jays. Now it's time for Drive of the Game, brought to you by the 2013 Honda CRV and IIHS Top Safety Pick. Honda is the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Now you mentioned Vernon Wells. How about another ex Blue Jay getting into the act for a home run? Lyle Overbay sends this one to center field for the second home run of the season. And then Vernon Wells off of Brett Cecil down and in his fourth to left field. Yankees doing a good job picking up XJs to help them here tonight. Kyle Overbay and Vernon Wells and a lot of time playing right here at Rogers Center as part of the home team. Brian goes after the first pitch from Darren Oliver and lines out to center field. Oliver is pitching for the first time since Tuesday in game two of the White Sox series. In, in that game he just pitched two thirds of an inning. So he needs some work. There are his numbers. Lefties have hit him hard, 583 this year. So that number will go down. Emilio Monifacio is in right field after pinch hitting for Rajay Davis. Jiro Suzuki still trying to climb up over 200, and that'll help. Slaps one past Lori. Cabrera quickly to his second and it's not in time. Suzuki with his second double of the night. We've seen this a few times in his career where he waits and waits and waits in a ball way. That inside out swing, you can see how he looks right down the barrel and just slaps it the other way. Nothing that Brett Laurie can do. You got to play percentages. And he slaps it down the third base line for an extra base hit. Suzuki is two for five in this game, and we've mentioned he has a career 340 average against the Blue Jays. His first two doubles of the season tonight. Suzuki and Karasaki were teammates last year with the Seattle Mariners. One out. Juan Nunez takes a fastball on the corner. Oh. 
Nunez and Yukus are the only Yankees not to get a hit. Everybody else in the lineup has at least one hit. They both have been on base tonight. Euclid actually has been on base and scored in the first inning. And Nunez had a walk. They'd hope that Oliver doesn't throw many pitches tonight, so he'll be available tomorrow afternoon. There's Euclid on the bench as he was part of that two run first inning. Oliver thought that was strike three, but it's been a ball all night. Very consistent with that pitch. But you're right about that. Oliver getting some work. It's been since Tuesday. And you're hoping for a quick inning. Because there's a quick turnaround for the afternoon game tomorrow, and you might need him in the eighth inning. Well, if you look at the Yankees lineup, Gardner can know top of the order. Then you've got Hafner in the Cleanup spot. Overbay down at the bottom of the order and Suzuki, of course. And a lot of lefty options in this lineup where you need all your lefties healthy. CISO won't be available tomorrow as he threw 37 pitches in an inning and two thirds. So you'd like to have Oliver and Luke available tomorrow. Tapped over the glove of Oliver. Good play by Kawasaki. Well, he released that ball in a hurry. He had a long run. He was deep and short, but made a nice play on the run. And Nunez can run. He can get down that line. Kawasaki knew he didn't have a whole lot of time. Darren Oliver almost comes up with it. There it is. They fortunate that ball came up and stayed up for him. Watch this hop right here. It stayed up for him. So it didn't bounce one more time. I think if it bounces one more time, he beats it out. Kawasaki has played very well feeling in for Jose Reyes. Lyle Overbay takes his strike. We saw Overbay in spring training with the Red Sox and he was really unsure of whether or not the Red Sox were going to use him keep him on the opening day roster and obviously that didn't work out. But he's found a home with the Yankees. Oliver closes out the ninth. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth. Blue Jays are down by six. Future Jays are just across the border. The Pawtucket Red Sox, a Triple A team of Boston, in town, April 23rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th. Then Cincinnati's Triple A team, the Louisville Bats, will be there May 2nd through the 5th, and the Norfolk Tides, Baltimore Orioles Triple A ball from May 6th through the 9th. For tickets, visit Bison's.com. Nice little ballpark, and boy, they are scoring a bunch of runs on Thursday. They set a franchise record with 27 runs scored against Syracuse. In 29 hits, right? Yeah. 
They really wore out Syracuse. They had swept the Syracuse team in a doubleheader on Wednesday and then came back and put up 27. Do you know who Syracuse is the triple A team of Washington? I believe so. Yeah. Wow. Washington Nets. Ball on the strike to Bautista. Jose hit a long home run back in the sixth off Andy Pettit. His fourth home run of the season. Breaking ball catches the inside corner. Timeout as a paper airplane found its way into right field. It's pretty good from the upper deck all the way out to where Ichiro stands. Two and two to Bautista, way inside. Sean Kelly come on in relief in the seventh and in the eighth inning with one down. He got the pinch hitter Bonifacio to strike out, and then Cabrera flew out. Bautista strikes out, comes out in front of that pitch. With one out. Now it's time for a preview of what's coming up on Connected. Here's Ken Reed and Ivanka Osman. One down, cleanup hitter Edwin Encarnacion. Edwin hit one right on the screws the last time up. But it was right at the third baseman, Kevin Euclid. Somewhere down the road, that one will come back to him on a blooper to right field. <laughs> you hear it all the time. You don't believe it when you're playing and yeah. you're hitting that that ball's going to even out. Yeah, they even out. Nope. Never did buy that. <laughs> they do. Slider for a strike. It's one and one. We'll be right back at it tomorrow afternoon, Ivan Nova. Oh, excuse me, that's Sunday. Corota and Burley tomorrow. Nova and Johnson on Sunday. Now a couple of day games. Hiroki Corota off to a good start at two and one. Mark Burley picked up his first win last time out. Corota was outstanding in his last start. Nova will go to the mound on Sunday. Josh Johnson will oppose Nova. Johnson threw the ball well last yeah. time out. Josh was really good. Had a good slider. Another foul back over the screen. Ball is driven to right. Suzuki over in the corner makes the catch. Blue Jays are down to their final out. You know the one thing about the Yankees, they still have pitching, don't they? CC Sabathia. He is as consistent as they get. All the injuries that they have had this year, they've been their everyday players. They've been able to fill in starters in their bullpen. Still really good. Aaron Sebia goes around on a slider from Sean Kelly. Yankees will go from here on Sunday down to Tampa Bay to finish up their road trip. Three against the Rays. Sabathia will open up that series, followed by Phil Hughes. And tonight, down in AAA, Chen Meng Wong is starting for the AAA team. He signed a minor league contract with the Yankees, trying to. Get back to the big leagues. Aaron Sebia. Big home run cut. One and two. Chen Ming Wong pitched five seasons with the Yankees and went 55 and 26. This is popped up near the seats. Long run for Suzuki and Kent. Get there. The ball is a couple of rows back into the seats. Wouldn't that be something if Jim Ming Wong can come all the way back? Didn't he have 19 game 
winning seasons back to back back to back years. Yep. Had more wins than anybody in two seasons. 38 wins. He pitched for Chinese Taipei in the World Baseball Classics. And lots of scouts watched him pitch. And the Yankees said, you know what? We know this guy. Just take a flyer on him. Aaron Sebi, a long drive to left, and this one's out of here. J.P. Aaron Sebi with his sixth home run. Comes with two outs in the ninth. That was a bullet. You know, and it was off a breaking ball. <laughs> he, he's a pretty good breaking ball when you throw it in the zone. He has had a much more compact swing this year. We've seen him hit a couple of home runs to right field. On this home stand, it's a breaking ball that just hangs over there, and JP goes down and gets it. Good two strike approach right there from Aaron Sebia. That home run ties JP Aaron Sebia for the American League lead with six homers, and this is a no doubter. Yeah, I like the idea he doesn't stride with that two strike approach. And hey, plenty strong. Knock it out of the ballpark. Chris Davis of the Orioles, he has six, as does Morris, and now J.P. and Sebia has joined those two atop the American League in home runs. You see Chad Matola talking to him. That's going to be a good relationship, I think. He had his greatest season in AAA, his best season, when Chad was the hitting coach in Las Vegas. All right, skies this one to right. This should do it. Suzuki is there, and the Yankees win. The Yankees scored first, and they improved their record to six and zero. Oh when they score first, they win nine four in the first of three. We'll be right back tomorrow afternoon. Hiroki Kuroda against Mark Burley. Stay tuned. Connected coming right up. Thanks for watching.